Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to our restoration series on this uh, Ben Wade pipe that we've been working on. Um, I have gotten the amber out of the little stem adornment and I was hoping I could just heat that up and push it out but it, it wasn't working and what I wound up doing was you know, resorting once again to, to files and just sort of filing little wedges out of out of the inside of that until it broke free and uh, I was able to get it out uh, it's kind of interesting so this is this is all solid amber and you can see that sort of white band there so whatever glue they used that that's the remaining residue of it so it was glued in um, it was also very tight so it was probably glued and heat fit uh, bottom line is I could not press it out and part of the reason I couldn't press it out is that these things were just kind of hanging out there and they're very very uh, fragile and I didn't want to put too much pressure on them to try to you know hold it while I pushed on this the other worry about this is that, you know it's flexible so if you're holding it um, you know in, in, a, in a piece of leather or something and it's hot and you're trying to push the piece out here if that piece suddenly gives way you, you may squish this and don't ask me how I know about that, uh, not on this pipe, but there have been some squishings. All right, the other thing I did was I just took a dowel and kind of went in and just very lightly pushed on this to try to reshape it a bit because there is some some damage here. And we're not going to be able to do too much on that because, uh, you know, we'd have to hammer it out or something, and that's going to destroy the engravings and the patina on it. So. We're just going to have to live with a little bit of distortion on these wings. We'll, we'll do our best when it comes time to finally fit it to the stem. In terms of the stem, uh, I've just temporarily inserted the tenon, so that's that's just shoved in there for now. We haven't glued it yet. Uh, this, it's a little difficult to actually get on here, but you can see it's still a bit tight. It doesn't fit, and that's okay because we'd like to heat this up and, you know, really... Uh, clinch it down onto the tenon, so uh, onto the stem rather. So we will do that. Uh, but we got another issue. Uh, this just so you you can see this is you know how this is going to work once everything's put back together. And I'm going to remove the the silver from this again and show you you know this fits quite nicely and I'm happy with it with the exception of th there's just a slight ridge up at the top here. Uh, fits well all the way around, uh, but but up at the top it just it's just a little bit proud. So it's not a perfect circle. We kind of expect it as much. Uh, we're going to have to do some sanding up here to bring the stem down, and I want to do that before I fit this piece to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to work on the stem as if this were what the pipe's going to look like in the end. And then we'll come back and, and fit the silver onto it at, at the very end. So I'm going to put the silver away because it is a, a bit delicate and I don't want to squish it. And the next thing we need to do is kind of figure out how we're going to shape the stem. So in order to properly shape and fit the stem, we're going to have to figure out which side of this we want to be up. And if I just rotate this around, you know, it's... It's not uniform, obviously, but there's various places where you get more figure. Now, the problem is I don't know if that's going to translate all the way down. So there's always a little bit of risk in doing this. But I want to have, you know, something interesting on the top is basically where we're going here. And if you just look at the, the broad end here, you can see that it's a little boring down here and it gets pretty exciting up here. Again, that may not be consistent all the way through, so we don't really know what we're going to wind up with, but we want to do our best to you know, make this visually interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and say that, uh, let's make this right here the top. That, that's where we sort of have the most interaction between the two. And to mark that, I'm just simply going to go ahead and put a line here. This is all going to get uh, sanded away eventually. But that's just a reference point, so I know that's the top of the stem. All right. So at this point, we're going to put that aside. Uh, 
and we're going to go ahead and mark out this, this stem, but the first thing we need to do is cut the slot because the slot is going to be our primary reference for marking everything out. So I need to do some uh, reset up of the camera so that I can show you how I cut the slot and I'll bring you back shortly. Okay, so you remember uh, when, I, when I had this on the lathe, I actually polished the face of this. And the reason I did that is I want to be able to scribe a line across here showing where I'm going to cut the slot. And remember, I'm going to be referencing off that top mark that we made. To do that, I'm just going to use one of these uh, center finding templates and fold it in there. And then I'm going to use this pin to uh, describe it. I'm going to do that off camera just because the camera angle is so awkward. Uh, but I think you get the idea. Just drawing a line. And do it quite a few times just to make sure that it's that it's it's really scribing. You probably can't see it, uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a little bit of this. Uh, I'll show you in just a second. Just a simple china marker. There we go. To fill that in a bit, just so I can see it better, and hopefully you can see it better. Uh, it, this is really not an important step, but I like to do it. It just helps me have a point of reference. Okay, I've got a cutter here in my Fordham. I'm going to try to do this without knocking the lathe all over the place and let's see. So one of the most important things here, uh, <laughs> you know what, I was, I was so, <laughs> I was so excited about talking about what I'm doing I forgot to reference this off the top. So we're going to do that one more time. That was rather foolish of me, but hey, I caught it before it was too late, right? Okay, so that's going to be the top. Bear with me, guys. Probably wouldn't have mattered that much because it's a very small difference in the angle, but I'd like to do it according to plan, so. Okay, now this is going to confuse you terribly because now it looks like a pair of cat whiskers, but I know which one I'm using. So I'm just going to hold that. This is just a V-block with some leather in it to, that, that I clamp in my in my vise here. And we'll hold that so that that is perpendicular. I've got a circular cutter in my Fordham. And I'm going to bring that in and try to keep it in line with that line that we just made. And go right for the center of that circle, of, of that hole rather. Slot is cut. All right, folks. So now for the stem layout. So we, we've cut the slot. We know where that is. And that's going to orient our stem. So we everything is going to be referenced off of that now. Um, I'm going to use some of this tape. It is... I don't actually remember the... Yeah, it's, it's a little bit less than a quarter inch. It's about uh, three-eighths. I'm sorry, uh, three sixteenths. It's a little bit less than a quarter inch, but it, it's just the right size for what I'm going to be doing here. And it's nice and bright yellow, so it's easy to see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to line this up with the slot, just kind of splitting the difference, getting it centered on that. And hopefully you can see how that lines up. And I'm gonna, I'm not quite happy with that, so I'm gonna move it a little bit. This is actually important. I, I want this to be as, as close to centered as I can make it. And let me see if I can put a little bit of a pencil mark in there so that you can see how that's lined up. And then I'm gonna hold that and bring this tape down the side and line it up right along the, the side of the shank. Trying to keep everything just in line with the uh, the slot. That's riding a little high. 
and of course using the the tenon as, as a as a guide as well almost it's worth taking your time with this there we go I'm happy with that so we're just gonna smash that down that yeah, looks good uh, now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and we're gonna use the tape that we've got there as a guide this is why I didn't cover the whole uh, the whole slot because I want to be able to line this up with the existing tape and the slot and that's off a little bit there we go that's pretty good same thing just bring it straight down okay and then what I like to do is I like to look at this from both the top and the bottom and by doing that I should be able to see this the same distance between the two edges of tape uh, and that that looks right they, they look about the same to me okay now we know that we're gonna have to do some changes down here but I don't want to do anything dramatic here I'm gonna do that all with uh, with sandpaper maybe some fine files and we can kind of set a boundary on that using this as a guide so we know that it's going to be fine tuning pretty much from this point on so let's get a piece of tape and I'm just going to mark that with my thumb and then come in here like so and I'm, I'm, I'm being conservative I'm erring on the side of leaving too much room because you can always adjust with uh, you can always remove material right that old uh, you know measure measure twice cut once rule okay so that's good so now we know that you know this is no man's land we're not going to do anything down here and um, that's it we're we're good so I'm gonna break these off just because they get in the way okay so why did I do that well it gives us a center line that that is aligned with this um, let's see if I can get my little sharpie here is aligned with the slot and that means that we have a reference point so anything we do can be done relative to the slot now and that is important because you know we're going the next thing we're going to be doing is taking these down uh, the, these these edges down with the sander and as we're removing material here and here of course down the whole length of the stem we want to make sure that we're doing it equally on both sides and also equally from side to side because we don't want to impinge on the on the airway and we don't want to have the slot wind up being you know crooked or, or in any way out of line with the rest of the stem so that's why we do this it's just a nice visual reference and I know from measuring and from previous experience that I can pretty much depend on the button being about a quarter inch and so I know I'm not going to take anything off lower than this tape so the tape also gives me a sort of boundary line uh, I'm going to do one more thing since I'm going to be sanding uh, I'm going to put a little mark up here just to keep in, just to help me remember which side is the top that's not terribly important now but once this gets shaped to fit the pipe uh, any movement in this uh, direction will wind up messing up that that shaping so uh, we want to always keep our orientation and of course one of the first things I want to wind up doing is sanding this mark away okay let's look at our stem so we're going to try to mimic this as much as possible. Um, oh, this is actually oh right because we because it's broken. I was going to say boy I really made that too long. Uh, <laughs> there was a piece broken off of course. So this is we're, we're, we want to make it so that it, well, first off we want to make sure it fits in the case and that's kind of important. And we want to make it a bit more of a modern stem if we can so just 
temporarily putting this back together and laying it down in there. I think we're going to be okay. It's a little, little tight there. We might need to, we might need to shorten this a little bit, but that can be done. Uh, and it's important to think about these things before you start taking this out around because of course we could always put it back in the lathe if we need to. Um, maybe it would make sense to just take a little bit off of here because that just seems to be a little bit too long. It's slight, it might be okay. I mean there's enough give in the case there. Yeah, actually that that's kind of fuzzy down there, so We are locked in by this. Oops, that's your, your, I'm sorry if I was out of shot there. We're locked in by this little nib here. So we don't have a lot of move, ability to move. But I think, yeah, we're, we're just a little bit too big. So I'm gonna adjust this a little bit before I shape it. Um, and you don't have to worry about that. I'll, I'll do that uh, off camera because I'm gonna go back to the lathe. I'm basically gonna clamp this in the lathe and just take a tiny bit off of this. Uh, let's see, and then adjust the tenon accordingly. How much am I going to take off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like a, a sixteenth of an inch. It's, it's not a lot, but I do want this to fit in the case when it's all done. And I'm doing it on this end <laughs> rather than just slicing some off of here because this is already you know, tapered and, and slot cut and everything. So if I were to come down here, we're going to wind up messing that up a bit. Uh, I think I believe that. <laughs> anyway, let me, uh, let me make those adjustments and then I'll bring you back and we'll talk about how we're going to shape the stem. Okay, we're back. Um, what I wound up doing was taking it off this end. The reason being, you know, as I thought this through, uh, we've got about an inch here where it's just a, a straight uh, shot. You know, we've just drilled in here with the 1 16th inch bit. <clears throat> so while we messed up the slot, it was easy enough to cut a new slot. This, uh, it wouldn't have made much of a difference, but, uh, you know, it just would be a lot more finicky to take it off of this end and then adjust the uh, the tenon as well. So, you know, this was the easier thing to do. It's It's relatively trivial when you're not filming it to cut a slot and, and to tape this up. So that's what I did. I, I cut off uh, a, a proud sixteenth of an inch here. And when we place it, hopefully you can see it's just going to fit in there, which is perfect. That's just what we wanted. Now, the reason I brought this out uh, originally was to look at the shape. And the shape of this is you know, pretty simple. This was pretty much a, a linear taper. So nothing too exciting there. And again, we want it to fit in here, so we don't want to deviate from that too much. I'm hoping we, we're going to be able to flare the end here just a little bit, because um, I think that'll make it a more comfortable bit. And I'm also going to thin this down a bit more than what we have here. This is, what do we got here? Yeah, we're looking at, uh, it's about 220, and I generally get these below 200 on, uh, when, when I make a, when I make a pipe, I, uh, when I make a stem, I like the bite zone to be 200 or less, so we're a little bit over there, uh, it looks a bit bulbous as well, so, you know, it's not flat, and of course that, uh, round hole is now replaced with a slot. Alright, so, basically... We now know what this is going to look like. We're going to have a linear taper here down to the button. Uh, from the sides, we're going to get rid of most of this. We're going to try to leave a little bit of a flare. We'll see how it fits. We may have to take that away, but uh, one step at a time. And then, of course, we're going to have some shaping to do down at this end uh, to get everything to, to line up nicely. Well, we're really well on our way now. Um, that was a lot of uh, work and probably has taken up a lot of video time, but I didn't want to edit out the mistakes. I thought they were worth uh, keeping in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do hopefully one more episode in this series where I'll take you over to the belt sander. I'll show you how I do the, the rough shaping of this, and then we'll, uh, we'll bring it to the 
vise and we'll do the the final shaping with files and, and sandpaper so hopefully in the next uh, video we'll be able to to finish this up and get the pipe back to jose thank you for watching i hope you you enjoyed this if you did uh those thumbs up really help us out a lot so please hit the thumbs up button if you're not subscribed please subscribe so you can get updates to this series as well as any other uh, restoration series that I might be doing. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again real soon.